we made it. Last one. Uh, let's get to it. Mr. Shaw back again. Uh, we're going to go over the nine uh, Supreme Court justices still paying tribute to uh, Antonin Scalia, uh, even though he passed away again because he was the most recent uh, Supreme Court justice. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead, guys. We'll finish up here. This should only take us uh, maybe 10 minutes max. Uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, this is our, again, this is our court. Again, we, we see, again, we have John Roberts here as the chief justice and then surrounded by, uh, again, the eight, uh, the eight other associate justices. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's look at them one by one. Okay, so Chief Justice uh, uh, John Roberts was appointed by uh, George W. Bush. Okay, so again, he is going to be uh, fairly conservative. Uh, Sam Alito Jr., also appointed by George W. Bush. Again, he like, like still on the conservative side. Uh, and then we have Stephen Breyer, who was appointed by Bill Clinton. So you would think that he would be uh, on the on the liberal side, uh, which he is, uh, and he actually kind of he will vote sometimes conservative, sometimes liberal. Uh, he's much more moderate, so he believes in judicial restraint, uh, and he is so he will he doesn't believe that he should use his power to uh, change the law dramatically. Uh, so he again he's going to be more of a uh, he's trying to uphold the consistency of the law uh, with with the power that he does have. Uh, next up, we have Clarence Thomas. Uh, again, he is very, very uh, soft-spoken. Uh, again, he uh, is, is uh, he's one of the guys that rarely will speak during an actual uh, an actual Supreme Court proceeding, uh, but he will uh, give his opinion very freely. He was appointed by George H. W. Bush, again, who was also a Republican. Uh, Antonin Scalia was appointed by Ronald Reagan in the 80s, uh, and he was absolutely the uh, the pinnacle of uh, conservatism. Okay, he wanted everything to stay the same or to kind of go back the way it was before. He believed that we should, you know, that we like the law should be, you know, we we, we should basically like look to the words of the Constitution for guidance. If it wasn't in the Constitution, okay, he didn't really believe that it should be part of our daily lives. Okay, like so things that, you know, things that were like like, like abortion, and you know, should be left up to the, to the states to decide because again, that wasn't in the Constitution. Uh, again, and he, he uh, will be sorely missed for Republicans. Uh, and again, Donald Trump is, has stated that he wants to uh, get a, a justice like Antonin Scalia, who is going to be that same kind of uh, constitutional conservative, uh, to continue that legacy uh, on, on the Supreme Court. Uh, we also have Anthony Kennedy, who was appointed uh, by Ronald Reagan. Uh, so again, he is going to be on the conservative side as well. Again, so, so far we've got... Uh, f about five to one. I, again, well, Anthony Scalia is not on the, the uh, Supreme Court anymore, obviously, so we're about four to one uh, as far as uh, the justices go. And then our, the last three are going to be our, our liberal justices. Again, Ruth Ginsburg, uh, who is pretty much the, uh, the polar opposite of Anthony Scalia. Again, she is as liberal as it gets. Uh, she was appointed by Bill Clinton. Uh, and she is getting up there in age as well, uh, so she will probably be the next one uh, to retire. Uh, although she has not uh, mentioned anything about that, she is probably going to stay there until she dies. Uh, we also have Sonia Sotomayor, who was appointed by Barack Obama, uh, again, very liberal. And then Elena Kagan, also appointed by Barack Obama. Again, so this kind of rounds up our, um, you know, our, our, our Supreme Court and again, rounds up our liberal side here. Uh, so right now the count is four to four, and that's very important because that's again that's part of the reason why it was very, uh, it, it was very shocking that the Senate did not approve or did not even want to hear uh, about uh, Barack Obama's pick because again the Supreme Court was pretty much locked at a four to four tie, and this is during a time when there's there are a lot of really important. Uh, cases coming before the Supreme Court, such as LGBT rights, again, uh, you know, all, all types of different, uh, you know, gun gun laws, gun issues, you know, and, and things that are going to affect a lot of people uh, that the Supreme Court is, again, at, at basically at a deadlock. And if it is, if if the Supreme Court uh, is ends in a tie, then the appellate court or the appeals court's decision is is upheld. Uh, so we're in a time right now. We've been we've been almost in a we've been in a deadlock now for a, about a year, and that again that's not like really what the Senate has done is that they have crippled the judicial branch, or the Supreme Court at least, uh, you know, for almost a year, 
Uh, and again, that's because they want to, you know, they want, you know, to have a Republican legacy, a conservative legacy uh, that hope that they hope that Donald Trump is going to provide uh, by uh, picking this one, and then uh, of course a number of different ones. Uh, you know, if Ruth, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg passes away, or any of the other ones that have been up are getting up there in age. Again, he has he has the potential, you know, to appoint at least one, definitely, and then maybe two, maybe three, and that's going to push the Supreme Court to a very conservative uh, uh, edge for a number of years until until those justices retire or pass away. Again, so that is that's really important, uh, and again, that's happened before, uh, in, you know, in uh, in U.S. history. Uh, but again, it's like they. That that impeding uh, them impeding Barack Obama's pick is, is again just very very important. Again, it's, it's going to determine uh, what the Supreme Court is going to look like for a, a number of years to come. Uh, so we have two sources of American law. Again, with the first one is and again right now, guys, we're kind of just tying up some loose ends. Uh, the the first source of American law is going to be the Constitution. Okay, so that's known as constitutional law. These are rights and duties that are set forth in constitutions, not only the, you know, the federal constitution, but also the state constitutions. Uh, so you can either study constitutional law or statutory law. Uh, and so, again, like I said, I, I said state and federal. The U.S. Constitution, though, is the supreme law of the land, uh, and that is going to uh, supersede any state law uh, that conflicts with it. Uh, and then statutory law, again, these are going to be uh, laws enacted by legislatures, so like Congresses, whether that's federal or state. Uh, the federal statutes that, or the federal laws are going to apply to all states, and state statutes, however, are, are going to be enacted by each individual state, and they only apply within that state. So, for example, Missouri's new gun law, again, that you don't have to have a license, you you know, you can to uh, conceal and carry. Again, that you can't do that in in Illinois. Again, if you did that in Illinois, you would you would face much stricter punishments. Uh, but again, so that that only applies in Missouri. Uh, and again, so I, that's what I had here. So that, like the constitutional law, anything having to do with the Constitution, and then statutory laws. Again, anything that that the state chooses, such as speed limits. Again, are examples of statutory laws. All right. Last thing, uh, we have again we have two types of laws. Uh, we are uh, two types of, of cases uh, that are going to come forth uh, to these courts. We have civil law and we have criminal law. So civil law is going to have is going to have to do with uh, individuals in society again, like their duties uh, in society. Uh, it could be about agreements. It could be about uh, you know leases, marriage, property, anything like that is going to fall under civil law. If a private party sues another pri private party. Again, they are going to be the plaintiff and the defendant, like, like uh, the, whoever the, the whoever sues is the plaintiff and whoever is getting sued is the defendant. Uh, again, that, that also falls under civil law. And the, the rulings on, uh, on in civil cases is usually uh, monetarily based. Uh, so anyway, if you lose a civil case, you're going to have to pay a certain amount. Uh, so like when you go like if, like for divorce like for divorces you know and if you if you lose the, the quote unquote divorce I, and it's not it's not exactly the same but like you if you would have to pay a certain amount to your spouse uh, you, like on a you know a monthly basis okay? again they're not going to like send you to jail unless you don't pay because that would be a crime because the court ordered you to pay uh, the other side, we have criminal law. These are going to be wrongs that are committed against the public as a whole. Uh, so again, these are going to be things that violate laws that are put in place for our safety, uh, such as assault, murder, fraud, robbery, anything like that. Again, you can't, obviously you can't do that. Uh, and again, that is going to fall under criminal law. The government is going to file against an, an individual. So any case that's like that, that is a you know a person committing a crime, committing a crime such as murder that the state or the or the federal government is the one that is is suing that person kind of suing that person it's not really the same they are filing suit against an individual that individual that created or they, that they committed that crime uh, and then the sentences for criminal laws are typically going to be jail time uh, some lesser uh, lesser punishments could be community service uh, or probation again that's going to be things that are not again not as serious uh, not as serious crimes or not sorry excuse me uh, not necessarily serious crimes you might actually have to do both community service if you 
uh, you know, if, if you commit a serious crime, you could do jail time and have community service and be on probation. Uh, again, it all kind of uh, it depends on the judge that is sentencing you. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, that's all I got for you today. So uh, I really appreciate you uh, being on this journey with me. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.